Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Well, if you like bobber style cruiser motorcycles straight from the factory, now is the best time to shop for one. You've got the new Honda Rebel 1100 that will be hitting showroom uh, floors within the next few months. Uh, you've got the always awesome Triumph and Indian Scout bobbers. And you even have the Harley Davidson Street Bob with the 114 cubic inch engine for the 2021 model year. Now I'll say right off the bat, I think only the first three bikes, the Honda Rebel 1100 and the Triumph and Scout Bobbers, and for the Scout I'm referring to the 1133cc uh, engine and not the smaller 980 engine, uh, that those three bikes compare more closely to each other than to the Harley Davidson Street Bob 114, just because the Harley has so much more torque. So for this video, I want to share my personal impressions of each of these bikes and suggest what a potential buyer for one of these bikes might want to look for in shaping their buying decision. I will say you really can't go wrong in selecting any of these great bikes. Also, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. First, let's start with an overview of the specifications. The Honda Rebel and the Triumphant Indian Bobbers all have liquid cooling. The engine displacements for those three bikes are in the 1100 to 1200 cc range. Seat height ranges from 25 and a half to 27 and a half inches, so most people will be able to readily flat foot these bikes. Tank size ranges from 2.4 gallons in the Triumph to 3.6 gallons in the Honda. The Honda uses the same African twin engine, which produces about 86 horsepower and 72 uh, foot pounds of torque. The Triumph produces about 77 horsepower and 78 foot pounds of torque with the Indian at 100 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque. Since we're talking about engine performance, the Street Bob 114 is at about 92 horsepower and 119 foot-pounds of torque. All of these bikes will go from zero to 60 in about four seconds. So now let's have an overview of each bike. There's certainly a lot of excitement about the Honda Rebel 1100. This bike features a lot of technology in terms of riding modes, traction control, ABS. Um, this technology is also on the Triumph bobber, but the Honda also offers a DCT version, so no clutch and shift levers to mess with for riders looking for easier operation. So I think the Honda will appeal to a broad group of riders, and it's two to three thousand dollars cheaper than the Triumph or Indian bobbers. So for me, and please use your own judgment here. The deciding factor for selecting among uh, one of these first three bikes boils down to individual fit and preference on looks. So I think uh, the Triumph and India Bobbers have much better aesthetics. The Honda Rebel, I mean, just look at that massive exhaust pipe on the Rebel. Uh, I think the coal-fired power plant will be calling to get their exhaust stack back. Uh, but if looks don't matter as much, to me, the Indian and Triumph bobbers look way better than the Rebel, and you want to save some money, the Honda's way to go. Also, the Honda is 40 to 70 pounds lighter than the Indian and Triumph motorcycles, and has five degrees more lean angle. That tells me that the Honda would be much more fun for local spirited riding. Uh, for longer hauls, I'd pick the Indian Scout bobber due to the combination of fuel capacity and slightly higher weight, which is better for highway riding. The Triumph only has a 2.4 gallon tank, which really is gonna limit its uh, touring range. Another thing to consider is that of the three bikes, the Honda and Triumphs are chain driven and the Indian is belt driven. Some people who would be in the market for these kind of bikes probably don't wanna be bothered with chain maintenance. On another note, the Indian Scout Bobber only has two inches of rear suspension travel. The other bikes have 3.1 to 3.7 inches of rear suspension travel. If I got the Indian, I'd definitely be doing a suspension upgrade right away uh, as a payment condition in many parts of the US, this isn't too great these days. So as I said earlier, I put the Harley Davidson Street Bob 114 in its own group among the bobbers. I mean, the Harley has 40 to 50 foot pounds more torque than the other bikes, uh, making the Street Bob a true power cruiser. Since I've owned other bikes with powerful engines, uh, I currently have a Street Glide Special with the 114 engine. Of course, that bike weighs 200 pounds more than the Street Bob. Also, I used to have a Ducati X Diavel S, 
I would personally go with the Street Bob 114 if I were shopping for a bobber. Uh, the Street Bob at 660 pounds weighs 100 pounds more than the Triumph and Indian bobbers, but personally, I think that's just right for highway riding. Also, I think having 120 foot-pounds of torque in a bike that weighs only 660 pounds would be a blast. Uh, I've heard that some people plan to buy the Street Bob 114 and do the 131 stage upgrade to provide even more power and torque. Uh, I mean, that'd be a real tire shredder. So to me, the Street Bob is really way different than the other bikes, uh, and I wouldn't recommend it for newer, less experienced riders, and I'd steer them to one of the other three bikes that I've been discussing instead. So, you know, for example, my, when my son moves up to a bigger bike in a few years, he'll probably go with a Scout Bobber. I mean, he really loves that bike. Uh, I do too. Uh, but, you know, he might look at the Honda Rebel 1100 to save some money. Uh, the Indian Scout also offers way more color options. I really like the, the kind of the burnt orange color. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is the naming on the Scout Bobbers is a little confusing. You've got the Indian Scout 60, which has the smaller 60 cubic inch engine, which is 980 cc's. Then you have the Scout Bobber and the Indian Scout Bobber 20. Both of those have the, the bigger 69 cubic inch engine, which is about 1130 cc's. Uh, for the Triumph, you can save about $1,500. Uh, so the price of the bike would be about 12000 by going with the chromed option on the exhaust in the lower part of the engine. So again, picking any one bike over the other depends on several factors. The first would be the amount of rider experience. I'd steer a new rider to a bike with a lot of rider aids like ABS and traction control that you have on the Honda Rebel 1100 and Triumph bobbers. The Honda Rebel has even more features that would appeal to a new rider, such as power modes, say a new rider would start out on a lower power mode like rain mode and then bump up to a higher power mode as a gained experience, and then DCT for automatic gear changes. Uh, for the rider with a bit more experience, or for someone who wants better styling in my opinion, I would go with the Indian Scout Bobber. Plus, the Scout offers a lot of customization options. Finally, for someone with more experience, or someone who's looking for a great looking power cruiser, I'd opt for the Harley Davidson Street Bob 114. The Harley would offer the most customization options among these bikes, including the ability to upgrade to a 131 cubic inch engine. So you can spend for comparably equipped bikes with the blacked out engine and exhaust styling uh, around 10,000 for the Honda Rebel 1100, 13,500 for the Triumph Bobber, around 14,500 for a well-equipped Indian Scout Bobber, and around 15,800 for the Harley Davidson Street Bob 114 with ABS. Well, what's your take on these bikes? Do you agree with my assessments? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks very much and hit that notification bell to look out for future videos.